Good evening, sir. I am Dr. Kalpana. I wanted to ask few questions regarding medical field. Basically, is family planning allowed in Islam? And why generally people prefer MTP, that is medical termination of pregnancy, rather than your TL? And it's very difficult to convince them. For a TL, it's very easy for them to do a MTP. Why is it so? Sister, being a medical doctor, she has given some short form MTP, TL, which may go bonser to the most of the audience. But I, being a medical doctor, I know what she's meaning. Sister has a question about the concept of family planning in Islam and why it's easier to convince the Muslim to do MTP, means medical termination of pregnancy, rather than TL. TL means tubal ligation. That is a permanent method of family planning. So I club both together. As far as family planning is concerned, it's a very big concept, planning the family. And mainly people plan the family and they want to prevent having children, etc. So what does Islam say about this? As far as family planning is concerned, all permanent methods, whether it be tubal ligation, TL, what you mentioned, whether it be vasectomy, any permanent method of family planning in Islam is prohibited. Secondly, any abortion, any MTP, medical termination of pregnancy, it is prohibited because you're killing a life, unless it is a danger for the life of the mother. If the mother's life is in danger, that maybe she has multiple cesarean sections, and if the doctors say that she has had four or five cesarean sections, one more cesarean section means detrimental to her life, or she has some heart problem and she cannot take the strain of undergoing one more pregnancy. So in this case, the Islamic Sharia says, let a small loss take place to prevent a big loss. The life of the mother is more important than the life that is going to come in this world. In this situation, these methods can be used as a last resort. Any permanent method? whether it be tubal ligation, whether it be vasectomy, whether it be medical termination of pregnancy, only in these cases. Any other cases, it is not allowed. Why it's prohibited, all these methods? Because Quran clearly states in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 151, that kill not your children for want of sustenance, for it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will give sustenance to you and your children. Allah repeats that message in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 31. Kill not your children for want of sustenance, for it is Allah who will give sustenance to your children and you. For killing of children is a major sin. So based on this, killing any human being is prohibited. Even the life that is going to come in this world, all types is prohibited. As far as the other temporary methods are concerned, there are different opinions in the scholars. First, the most common is the copper tea. Now, in copper tea, when I was in the medical college, I was taught that it is a contraception. But what happens in the copper tea, the ovum and the sperm have already joined to form the zygote. But the copper tea prevents the zygote from clinging on the uterine wall, on the wall of the womb of the mother. So it is nothing but a very early abortion. So Islamically, those people who know about the medical science, even copper tea is prohibited. As far as there may be difference in the other temporary method, whether it be condom, whether it be other method, once a person came to the Prophet and told him that I used to do uz, that is coitus interruptus. I have to stop the act so that the fluid doesn't enter the body of the wife. And the Prophet was silent. Those people who are in favor of certain temporary method, they say Prophet was silent, he gave permission. The other group, Prophet was silent, he didn't give permission, different opinion. But I go back. What is the reason that a person wants to do family planning is my basic question. See, normally a doctor, when a person has a headache, you give aspirin, you give crocin. It is not a cure. It is a symptomatic treatment that the threshold of pain is increased, so you don't feel the pain. But that is not actually curing the disease. The best way to cure is to kill the germs. So first, let us find out why do different human beings want to do family planning? Whatever reason you have, you can broadly club them into two broad categories. 
The first category is for poverty. I'm poor. If I have many children, for me to live itself, hand to mouth. If I have children, then I will also die. The other group, they are rich. I have no problem about money, but I want to make my son a doctor. I want to make my son an engineer. You know, so they were family planning, so I can bring my children better. Inshallah, we'll discuss both the cases. As far as the first case is concerned, regarding those people who are poor, Islam has a solution to this problem. In Islam, the third pillar of Islam is zakat. That is, every rich person who has a saving of more than the nisab level, more than 85 grams of gold, he or she should give 2.5% of that excess wealth in charity every lunar year. If every rich human being gives zakat, poverty will be eradicated from this world. There will not be a single human being who will die of hunger. So if your problem is poverty, Islam has a solution. And the person who takes zakat, he is not being degraded. And the person who is wealthy and giving zakat, he is not doing a favor on the poor man. Because God gave him wealth, it is his duty. He is not doing a favor on the poor people. And the poor people, when they take, it is not that it's an obligation they have. It is their right. So if poverty is the problem, we have a solution of compulsory charity, that is zakat. If every rich human being in the world gives charity, poverty will be eradicated, there will not be a single human being who die of hunger. Now the verses of the Quran I quoted earlier, two verses. Surah Anam chapter 6, verse number 151, and Surah Isra chapter 17, verse number 31. On the face of it, both appear similar, but there's a difference of chalk and cheese. The first verse of Surah Anam chapter 6, verse number 151 says, Kill not your children for want of sustenance, for it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will give sustenance to you and your children. Surah Al-Isra, chapter 17, verse number 31 says, Kill not your children for want of sustenance, for it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will give sustenance to your children and you. The order is reversed. First verse says, you and your children. Surah Isra says, your children and you. On the face of it, it's the same. Now, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reverse the order? Everything has a hikmah behind it. So the scholars, the Mufassirin, what they say, the first verse, Surah Anam chapter 6, verse number 151, refers to the poor people. You know, if you have more children, even I will die, and even my children will die. So Almighty God says, don't worry, kill not your children for want of sustenance. It is Allah that will give sustenance to you and your children. The first verse refers to the poor people. The second verse for the rich people, I've got no problem of money, but if I have spacing, if I have less children, I'll make them doctors, I'll make them engineers. So Allah says, kill not your children for want of sustenance. It is Allah will give sustenance to your children and you. Order is reversed. Now what is the solution for people who are rich? That's the second category. Just for your knowledge, I would like to tell you that I am the fifth child of my parents. If my parents would have done family planning, I wouldn't have been here. Do you think I'm a boon or a bane for society? In the world, in society, best profession, doctor, medical doctor. Best is medical doctor, nothing better than that. Alhamdulillah, even after being the fifth child, I became a medical doctor. But I became a doctor to serve humanity, but when I found a better profession, Allah says in Surah Fusila, chapter 41, verse number 33, who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of thy Lord, works righteousness, and says that I am a Muslim? When I found a better profession, I changed from a doctor of body to a doctor of soul. If I was a medical doctor, I am surely there is more than a lakh people here. They wouldn't have come for my talk. They have come because I have changed from a doctor of a body to a doctor of soul. I am asking you, I am the fifth child of my parents. Am I a boon or am I a bane for society? People have a misconception that if you have less children, you can have spacing and you can bring them up well. If you check the list of all the Nobel Prize winners and people who have got awards, best in world, best in science, best in sports, they aren't the first child. They are not the only children. Some may be. Some are second child, some are third, some are fifth. It's mixed. It's a misconception. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a natural method of spacing. In Islam, the moment a child is born, the mother should breastfeed the child. But today in modern world, they don't want to breastfeed because they spoil their figure. 
the best food according to medical science that you can give to your child is the breast milk. And if you breastfeed your child, automatically there is lactation aminuria. You being a doctor, you know, there is lactation aminuria. That means she will not conceive. Though it's not 100% safe, but the chances she'll conceive is very little. So automatically, Almighty God has given spacing. And population, sister, it is not a bane, it is boon. You know, we say in our country in India, hum do hamare do. We too and our too. Ek ke baad abhi nahi, do ke baad kabhi nahi. After one, not now, after two, never. So these are slogans in India because Indian government doesn't know how to take care of the population. If you go to America, the children wear a T-shirt. I am my father's tax saver. The more children you have, the less tax they have to pay. You go to Australia, you go to Canada. The moment a child is born, the government gives them allowance. Every child, every month you get allowance. So the government of US, Canada, Australia, they're encouraging population. Why is the government of India discouraging? So it's problem with the government policies, it is not with population. And do you know today, the two countries which are competing for being superpower is China and India. China has the maximum population in the world, India is number two. Today, India and China, they are competing to be the superpower. Why? Because both of them have got manpower. When I say manpower, it means human power, it includes the women also. China and India have got human power. That's the reason today, you find America coming here to invest money, you find the Westerners coming to invest money here, you see the stock market going high. Why? Because of population. So population, it is a boon, it is not a bane. So even if you want to make your children doctors and engineers, don't think you never know your fifth child may become a doctor or your second child. It is not that if you have more children, then you can space them better. Now there's a third category, a unique category, once someone told me, that brother Zakir, I'm rich. I'm not bothered about bringing up children. You know, I'm rich, so no problem of money. And I'm not bothered about making my son a doctor or engineer. I want to enjoy life. Third category. So I told him, even for you, if you want to enjoy life, the best is marry early, have children early, so that you can retire early. You know, there are certain communities in India, you know, Gujaratis and all, they marry early, 19, 20, 21. They have children immediately. By the time they reach 35 to 40, their children, they are on the seat of the business. So at the age of 40, they can retire. They have retired at the age of 60 and 70. At the age of 40, their children are taking care of the business. They can enjoy life. So even if you want to enjoy life, marry early, have children, relax, and enjoy life. Therefore, personally, as far as my opinion is concerned, I believe with those group of scholars, as far as family planning is concerned, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 54, Makaru khairul makreen. They planned and plotted. Allah too planned. Allah is the best of planner. So if you think you can plan the family better, you're most welcome. I leave the planning of the family in the hands of a creator. It is the best. Hope that answers the question. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.